Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. It is Friday, so that means we are dropping another knowledge nugget. This week we are talking about layer 3 of the OSI model, which is the network layer. Before we get to that, <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for pushing us up over that hump. We've got a lot of technical videos coming up. Um, I was trying to release some out-of-band videos, and I may still do that, but my regular work schedule is crazy busy, and... Uh, you know, everything else going on with the channel is keeping me busy and I still need to find, you know, some of that life work balance. So uh, if you're in IT, you understand how delicate of a balance that can be. And uh, God bless my family because, um, you know, they, they really stick through it, you know, and IT is not always uh, as far as hours and, you know, that work life balance is not always the most uh, flexible thing, but you know, they, uh, they understand, and, you know, I make up for it occasionally. So uh, let's get over to the drawing. All right, so here's our start. And in the first week, we talked about the physical layer. So if we recap the physical layer, you remember that's your uh, bits, your physical transmission, you know, cable, RF, things like that. Data link, that is your layer two. That is where your switching comes in and frames. MAC addresses, burned in addresses, those things. This week, we are talking about the network layer. And the network layer is where most of your routing takes place, right? So I'm going to write that there, routing. And I've got some notes that I'm going to kind of refer to occasionally here. I wrote some things down, some things that I really wanted to touch on. But uh, you'll notice that this is the third layer. And there are addresses in layer three, but they are logical. So a physical burned in address is just that it's a physical address so your mac address is physical yes can we we fake it out with software and we can spoof macs and do all that cool stuff you know that we do yes you can do that but at the network layer they are totally logical whereas at the data link layer it is actually burned in and is manufa manufacturer specific so remember that so you have at this layer you would have ip addresses right you would also have, if anybody remembers this, you could have IPX addressing here as well. So this actually kind of goes into one of the things that I wanted to touch on is that these are a couple of the protocols that are also used at this layer. Now you'll notice I didn't put TCP in there because we're going to talk about that later. That's not going to come in at layer three yet. We are going to talk about IP and by its very nature, IP is actually connectionless, right? So what else are we going to talk about? So along with IP, you have IP version four, which is our dotted decimal that everybody loves. And it's not going to go away. Let, I know that these providers or, you know, people are saying, yeah, we've exhausted our IP version 4. Okay, so what may have happened is that there are no more to assign, right? But that doesn't mean that there are no more IP version 4 addresses. As more networks are consolidated and either move to 6 or actually start using NAT properly, uh, these addresses get freed up. You can go buy blocks of IP version 4 from providers that have them assigned to them. So it's not like you can't get IP version 4 addresses. Um, one of the most popular IP version 4 addresses out there right now is that guy. I think everybody knows what that is. The old popular one used to be 4.2.2.2, which still works. And if you know what these are, light it up down in the comments but this guy is pretty pretty popular another popular address logical address 
is this. There's no place like 127.0.0.1. Anyway, I see t-shirts that say that, and, and whenever I hear that, I say, oh, local host. There's no place like local host, but people mean home, and 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 so sometimes I get I get confused by that. But it's all good. It's all geek humor, and we all get it. But these are logical addresses, and then, of course, um, you have your IP version 6, which is a hexadecimal monster. And if you do the calculations, I think every grain of sand on Earth... Something like this. If I'm wrong, correct me. Every grain of sand can have an IP. The version 6. It's a lot of addresses. And there's other things. There's security built in. There's all kinds of redundancies and things built in. And, and um, so... Um, does anybody remember this, by the way, this IPX? I remember before I was a Cisco junkie, uh, which was before I was a Ubiquity junkie, but even before that, I was an Eastern Research junkie. And Eastern Research was the very first place I ha ever had my hands on a DS3 Mux. And it was absolutely awesome. If you have no idea what I said, that's okay. Because I've been doing this for a little while. Uh, but basically, how we used a, a DS3 Mux, uh, you may hear them called... Uh, T3s, but uh, so there's a T carrier, but then uh, when you start talking about Ds, like DS0, so that's like a channel. I anyway, uh, what we would do is we would bring a, a T3 or DS3 in, and we would mux it ourselves, so you might have like 27 sites around the country. Instead of the telephone company muxing that for us, we'd plug it into a DNX11, which was a big chassis-based mux system, and we would mux out, you know, 128K line here, and a T1 here, you know, uh, or a DS1, you know, so, uh, but anyway, the very first router that I saw IPX in was uh, that Eastern Research, and that was interesting, and I will tell you, I, I had official Novell training, I never used it, I knew how to use it, but I ripped out more of these networks and replaced them with standard uh, IP networks than I can shake a stick at, I also ripped out more Novell Netware servers and replace them with Windows NT servers, then I've got fingers and toes to count. So, back to layer three. Our routing does take place here. Very important to note that routing does take place here. Now, in the comments in the last video, somebody brought up ARP. So, I'm going to bring up ARP and RARP. Okay? So, I'm not puking. ARP! <laughs> uh, I thought that was funny. So ARP is uh, Address Resolution Protocol, and RARP would be Reverse Address Resolution Protocol, right? So what does ARP do? Um, if you go into your ARP table, you will see where it matches this matches an IP to a MAC address. Okay, so that's what it does. It matches an IP to a MAC. So what do you think RARP does? Maybe reverse goes in the opposite direction. Here's why I didn't really talk about it. So while ARP functionally uh, works at layer 3 and layer 2, works across layers, it's not actually specified in the OSI model. Uh, ARP and RARP are actually part of the, um, I believe it's the link layer of the IP suite, so of the actual internet protocol. And if we didn't talk about this, this means... Internet Protocol. Let me write that up here. Internet Protocol. Which brings us to our protocol section. So what other protocols work um, with IP at this layer, right? So we'd be talking about like IPsec. What else? ICMP. IGMP. These are all going to work at the network layer. What else works at the network layer? RIP, which is a really 
old routing protocol. Okay. Actually, the first dynamic routing protocol that I learned how to configure way back in the day, but worked. Super duper simple. Slow convergence time. Okay. There is a newer version. I think they're working on it, but I haven't I haven't deployed it. Um so at layer two, the data link layer, we, we talked about frames. And I'm gonna ask you this. When I say frame, does anybody else see like the old Windows 95 screensaver that had like the lines and like the triangles and stuff moving around? For some reason, whenever I hear frame, I see like this picture. I don't know, it's really weird. I don't know. It's weird. This is what I imagine in my head a frame looks like. It's totally not probably what it looks like, but this is what Willie imagines a frame looks like. So at layer three, we are dealing with packets. And uh, this could be like a manila envelope with your little thing here, and there's a thing down here, and the little ropes keeping it tied. Packet. Right? IP packet. You drop packets. There's latency with your packets, right? Everybody is familiar with this with this uh, terminology. So this is kind of where packets, that's the, the PDU for uh, um, IP and for the, the network layer. Uh, this layer is also responsible for fragmentation and reassembly of the packets. And I'll write that down. Fragmentation and reassembly. Okay. Then uh, we talk, talk about ARP and RARP and that IP is connectionless. But what does that mean? So I am going to erase some of this stuff. So uh, you can always go back and uh, take a look at this, but I'm going to erase some of this. Um, so we got a little bit more room to scribble. By the way, I'm not reaching up and touching the screen, so I hope everybody appreciates that uh, you know I'm using the Wacom tablet. I really love the Wacom tablet. If you're not following me on uh, uh, Instagram and the Twitter machine, you should check it out because uh, I'm uh, drawing these angry, angry cloud uh, cartoons and maybe I'll, I'll bring one up but angry cloud I kind of came up with it the cloud is always angry he's always um, upset and uh, always destroying something and last week's cartoon was the uh, the net the net pets or whatever they are but um, so we've got packets here but what does it mean that it's connectionless right so I've got this host over here right so we're gonna call this host a Okay, and over here is host B, and host A is going to send some information to host B, but it's connectionless, right? So what does that mean? So it means that A just starts firing this off, and A doesn't care if B ever gets it. There's nothing there. Uh, to ensure the delivery, the proper delivery, anything like that. So at the IP, at IP Internet Protocol itself is connectionless. Okay, so uh, it just fires these these uh, these packets, and if it gets it, it gets it. So it's it's connectionless. Um, then the other thing. So there's another layer above network that we're going to get to next week. Right, but we got to talk about these. these. These layers all have, all have to work together, right? So, of course, the network layer is going to take information from the transport layer and encapsulate it into these packets, and then these packets get sent to the data link layer and converted, and so on and so forth. So you've got this, you know, this conversion back and forth between the layers. Now don't get too hung up on this because we're going to talk about this next week. That's next week. 
Um, we talked about ARP and RARP, and I think that that is kind of where I want to wrap this up at the moment. Just remember, you know, that, uh, that, uh, you know, routing takes place here. That's where, this is where IP lives, IPX, if you're still using that. I don't know why. Let's uh, call me. Let's have a conversation if you're still using IPX. It is connectionless. IPsec, ICMP, IGMP live here. Packets. I cannot stress uh, this enough. Packets live here. Packets. Anytime you start dealing with that IP protocol, you are dealing with packets. Once again, this is the network layer. Layer 3. Network layer. Oh, look at that. So I think that that's it for now. Um, real quick, if you're interested, I can uh, pause this and I'll bring up an angry cloud. So hold that thought for just a second. So here was this week's angry cloud cartoon. And I've got another one that's coming out I did for LastPass, if you haven't heard about their latest security conundrum. Um, but this is meant to be jovial, something fun, you know, to, to rally around. Um, and uh, I'm actually having a mascot head made of the uh, the Angry Cloud, believe it or not. I'm working with several people on that. So you'll see Angry Cloud, and it'll have a suit and tie on in real life. But uh, this was about cloud pets. I don't know. Germany actually banned cloud pets because of security concerns. Turned out their concerns may have not been so far-fetched. Uh, but uh, do a little research and take a look at the cloud pet. And uh, the short and long of it is, is that the cloud pet knows everything the kids told them, everything about the kids, address, you know, location, greatest fears, and uh, the hackers uh, in the angry cloud uh, do too. So that's going to wrap up this knowledge nugget, which was the OSI layer model three, the network layer. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Click the little bell down there to be notified when I release new videos. Please comment. Please share. Please use all of my affiliate links to help us keep the channel going. And we'll see you at Security Saturday.